Hey everybody, Jamin here from Game Show. I'm here at the office, and I just got back from San Francisco where I was at the Game Developers Conference. It was, uh, it's really cool. If you ever get a chance to check it out, you absolutely should go. Um, one of the things that I, I heard that was really interesting was a talk by John Carmack, who I'm sure a lot of you know is the creator of Doom. He's a very famous technical director who recently took a post um, running all the technology for, um, for the Oculus Rift, which is a uh, company that was acquired by Facebook. They're doing virtual reality technology. And he gave, gosh, an hour long plus talk just sort of walking through his vision of, uh, of what virtual reality ostensibly will be like. Um, I think there are a couple really interesting takeaways from the talk, um, a lot of which was incredibly technical and definitely over my head. Um, but there, there, were, there were two things I thought that was, that was really, really interesting in terms of framing how we should think about virtual reality. I think the first was um, you know, he'd sort of made this, this point that, you know, and this is really strange for someone who had basically cut his teeth as being the god of you know PC games and kind of being known as someone who's always kind of pushing technology forward. He made this really strong case that in order for technology like virtual reality to really uh, make a significant dent, it would have to reach essentially a billion people, which is roughly the size of roughly the size of Facebook's audience. Um, and the reason why is because you know in order for a technology to really take hold, it kind of has to be in the hands of as many people as possible. And that sort of reminded me that like you know as popular as virtual reality ostensibly has been amongst people who play games, um, obviously in technical communities, most people haven't really tried it yet. And I think until um, it's in the hands of kind of like everyday people, like your mom, for example, um, it's going to be really hard to tell whether or not virtual reality is the sort of roaring success that it is. And I think, you know, the big revelation for me was that um, this idea that, you know, for him, he was thinking that the future of VR experiences was going to be these like much smaller kind of contained bite-sized experiences, not necessarily these like kind of big AAA type things that you might be sort of accustomed to. So, you know, the future is, you know, again, for, for this guy who's responsible for games like Doom, for him to essentially sort of suggest that games like Flappy Bird or things like that are going to be pushing virtual reality forward is certainly a big concession. I think the second big thing that, that really dawned on me actually came after I had a chance to try um, two different Oculus experiences. Um, one was uh, created by Weta, who, you know, did a lot of the, they did a lot of um, you know, visual effects for uh, movies like uh, like The Hobbit, for example, and I tried an experience that they did that was tied to um, sort of the smog narrative from The Hobbit. It was really crazy. And another one I did was um, one from Oculus Story Studio. It was a short called Lost, which is about a hand that's lost in the forest. Um, I think that that made it pretty apparent that like cinema is going to be one of the big technologies driving virtual reality forward in the future. Um, this idea, I think, before we're going to get to a place to have interactive experiences, I think we just need to have these sort of like past of being in a world experience. And um, again, it, you know, these are not experiences that are yet available to the public, but I'll link to them in the description. One last thing, uh, I think, before I go, I think one of my big concerns, certainly on the virtual reality side, is that there are a wide variety of different players right now who are in the space. Um, gosh, I mean, there's, there's so many. There's Oculus, and then, you know, HTC and Valve just announced a new one, and, um, you know, there's an open source VR project. Um, you know, Sony uh, has Project Morpheus that's coming out. Apple has filed patents for VR. I think for creators, until there's a single um, a single technology um, that's really uh, unified for all different types of creators to use, I think it's going to be really, really tough to really see things move forward. I think what a really good analogy is kind of the early days of the web when there are a variety of different browsers. And you know, for a lot of you, you probably don't remember this, and it was certainly before my time as well. There was a moment in time for the history of the web where there was concern that you know each individual browser would have its own set of standards. So if you were the New York Times, for example, you'd have to make your web page differently if it showed up on Internet Explorer versus if it showed up on Netscape. And there's this big meeting, a uh, web standard summit, where they made these decisions about like what is the technology, how, how are websites going to be displayed across all browsers. And I think until virtual reality reaches a similar type of consensus about um, how things are made and how they're ultimately distributed, I think it's going to be quite some time before um, we really start to see the technology take off. But Hey, I could be wrong. Anyway, that's all for now. Um, obviously very excited about all the things that are happening in the world of VR. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all next week.